miniature of the ancient seas. We get asked, why do you go to a lake to study the Permian Ocean? Turns out this lake is a lot like the ocean, actually. It's fairly salty, and its circulation system, the process that brings oxygen down deep into this lake, is shut down, just like we think happened to the Permian Ocean. The top layer of the lake is healthy and thriving. But deep down, the bottom layer is stagnant and still. By lowering a water sampler 150 feet down, Kump's diving deep into the past to a time when the Siberian traps were erupting. Well, we have a couple of clues from this water that's telling us about what's going on down there at the bottom of the lake, one of which is its color. And this water is pink because it's loaded with tens of millions of purple bacteria cells in uh, each ounce of water. And the other is the smell. So if I open up the lid here and take a whiff, it's a very potent smell of rotten eggs. And that's a very characteristic smell of hydrogen sulfide. Oxygen is toxic to purple bacteria. So stagnant water is a perfect breeding ground. These single-celled survivalists flourish where other sea life suffocates. But they have a nasty side. They produce a noxious and pungent poison gas called hydrogen sulfide. The tiniest amounts can be fatal. The same bacteria live in sewers, so workers there must carry gas detectors. Hydrogen sulfide deprives your body of oxygen. It's also a strong neurotoxin, so it has that detrimental effect as well. And the really insidious thing about hydrogen sulfide is that it paralyzes our olfactory nerve. In other words, we can't smell it anymore. And that's what's so terrible, because right after you stop being able to smell it, if the level keeps building up, it can become instantly poisonous. Kump's trying to figure out if the same lethal microbes plagued the seas stripped of oxygen by the Siberian eruptions. He's searching for proof in rocks from 250 million years ago. But bacteria don't leave fossils. So instead, he's pursuing the chemical traces they leave behind. So the clues we're looking for are compounds called biomarkers. These are chemical fossils. They're fragments of the organism that have been preserved over long periods of geologic time in these rocks. And from these fragments, from these chemical fossils, we can try to identify what organisms might have been involved in this mass extinction. Like a fragment of bone or shell, a chemical fossil is a fingerprint identifying the microorganism which made it. And Kumps struck lucky. This is it. This is the clue we've been looking for. This is the chemical fossil, the biomarker, that tells us that these organisms were existing at the time of the greatest mass extinction of all time. As Siberia erupted, the purple bacteria were in paradise, vigorously poisoning the water with hydrogen sulfide. The sea became a suffocating, toxic cesspool. The trilobites and virtually every other species of sea life died out and never returned. The evidence is building up as to how massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia wiped out nearly all marine life on Earth. Fool's gold shows the sea lost its oxygen. Biomarkers show it was also poisoned with lethal hydrogen sulfide. The earth was choking. Life could no longer depend on its two most vital resources, air and water. <laughs>